All right, guys. Let's uh, let's see if we can do something here today. Today, I, I want to come to you and and talk to to you, not just you but myself. So when you hear hear me speak, I'm speaking to myself as well as each and every one of you today. And uh, I want to talk about the number one thing that a lot of preachers, uh, especially the preachers that uh, uh, want to keep butts in the seats, is sin. Uh, preachers that uh, tend to preach uh, on sin and, and hell and uh, repentance uh, tend not to have a huge church because people want to feel good, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of people now, they want to feel like they're being entertained. So now when you go to some of these churches, they have these lights and fog machines and these laser thing tags and, you know, and, and it's becoming more of a concert and more of a, you know, an, an empowering word of how good you can feel and how great things are going to be. But that's so far from the truth, isn't it? I mean, if we get honest with ourselves, that's really far from the truth. Just like when, uh, just like in life, even before maybe you knew who God was or knew before you know what salvation was, things always seem to, to digress. Something to get worse and worse and worse, right? And you always wanted, thought about, well, maybe if I... If I put ten dollars in, I can get to Powerball this time. Or maybe if I pick these numbers, I can get to Mega Million, huh? How many times have we done that one before? Or how many times we say, "Well, I'm not going to smoke crack. I'm just going to smoke some weed and pop some pills, have a little drink, have some fun, right?" A week later, you say, "Well, I'm not going to smoke an eight ball of crack. I'm just going to smoke a little bit of cook, beat a little beats of that cookie. I'm going to put it in there. It'd be all right. I'll push it through later." And for, the, and for the people with the meth, right? How I many people say on the, on the meth, like, I'm just going to party one time and see what this whole meth thing's all about. And next you know, your face is all beat up and you, you, your eyes are all sucked back in your skull and you're stealing from your mom, your kids, your boyfriend, your girlfriend. You, you're out there doing things you know you shouldn't be doing. You're out there prostituting yourself. Guys are out there, I mean, just straight up robbing people, doing whatever they have to do to get... Why? Because they want to chase that high. It always seems that nothing is going to be good enough. Amen? Amen. It don't matter. I mean, how many times, I mean, if you can sit there and think, how many times you think, well, I'm only going to do this, or I'm only going to do that, or when you got a job and you were trying to live a straight life, you say, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to go out there and party with this check. I'm going to, you know, give some money to my kids, send some money to my baby mama. I'm going to go out there and maybe buy some, you know, some nice lotion and some hair products. Try to make myself look better, right? And then what happens when payday comes along? Huh? Hallelujah. That, that, that phone all of a sudden seems to have the number for the dope man. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the truth? Amen. It, you always seem like, well, I'm just going to get me a little bit. I'm just going to drink me a little bit. I'm just going to do the little bit of thing. And next you know you lost your job. You lost your, you lost your hope and what, you what your whole plans were. You, you lost your little coin saying you was doing good. The reality is that it's sin leads to more sin. Amen. Sin will steal your joy. Sin, 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 sorry, sin. sin will always, always defeat you. The only way that you can defeat sin is through Christ Jesus. It's through the man who came down in flesh. It's the man that showed us the way Lent a hand to those who were down. That casted out demons for those who were, those who were uh, possessed, and those who, and he gave encouragement to. He raised the dead. He showed us the way to live and how to love and how to treat one another, how to have confidence in yourself. That's another thing. Sin will steal your confidence when you're in front of a holy God. Sin. I know it's a thing that a lot of people don't want to talk about and a lot of people don't want to really have a conversation about. Why? Because we're all guilty of sin. If we are all were in a courtroom right now and, and there was a judge and, and he was saying, you're, he was giving out your whole life and he was saying guilty, 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 there'd be a penalty to pay for your sins. Amen. There would be something that you would have to do, a prison time or a death sentence or community service for those who maybe just said a little bad word or maybe if you only smoked a little crack and robbed a few people, maybe if you only prostituted yourself out a little bit, maybe if you only 
robbed and stole your boyfriend or, or maybe you left your kids out with this guy or with that person or you're not really thinking about it. maybe you only have to do a couple months in prison well maybe if you only rape people rob people kill people <laughs> and you get a death penalty the fact is sin leads to death if you if you only if you only did a little bit of this wait a year that little bit of this will turn a lot to that and a lot of that will turn into a whole big mess of this and i'm telling you it doesn't matter what it is in your life and Lord knows we've had some things in our life. Sin will always, always defeat you, especially take your confidence away from when you're standing in front of a holy God. You'll no longer have that boldness, that encouragement, that holiness of, uh, of love and fire when you're, when you're talking to God because you know in your heart you've committed sin against Him. Well, I'm here to tell you that the, the blood of Jesus is the key not just the key as in key, but as in the key that will turn open that prison cell. That will turn over the papers saying what you've done in life. It will wash away. It will set you free. But we have to learn how to live free. We have to learn how not to be enslaved into sin. Because that's another thing that sin will do. It will enslave you. It will enslave you. Make you a person that you never thought you could become. Sin will take every bit of joy away from you, every bit of sunshine, and every bit of hope. When your kids look at you and they don't see a mommy or a daddy, what do they see? They see a person they don't want to become. They see a person that they want to, don't even want to tell their kids or their friends about. Excuse me. When your kids get old enough and they realize who you really are, that's the most painful part. Is when your kids don't even want nothing to do with you because of who you are it's because that enslavement to sin it's because that addiction of of whatever it may be to <laughs> food i mean come on look at me porno uh, drugs alcohol gambling it doesn't matter what it is it will take your joy it will leave us far away from the throne of glory hey man today i want to talk to you about you know what Hebrews says, encourage one another. We have to encourage one. When we see a brother or a sister on the street and we know that they're struggling, it is not just a duty as Christians, but it's a duty as humans to help one another. To say, hey, 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 hey man, I see where you're headed. I see where you're going. Let me take you over here. Let me get you a bite. Let me take you somewhere away from where your mindset is going right now. Let your child see that you're strong enough to stand on your own two feet and declare victory through the blood of Jesus that you can now have a new foundation through Christ Amen. who strengthens you. Sin never satisfies. It never satisfies. If you have been satisfied through sin, please raise your hand. I'm still waiting. I don't see anybody that's been satisfied through sin. How many people have been satisfied through the glory of God? I know I have. How many people can honestly sit there and say, boy, I wish my kids could look at me like I was a piece of dirt again? Nobody. Not one single person. Or my parents could hate me just a little bit more. Not one person. Why? Because in deep down inside, you are not satisfied with who you have become. But through Christ and through the blood and redemption that he paid on Calvary, you can have life and life more abundantly. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Our strength shouldn't come from our past, but from the future in God. Our strength should never come from a trembling way of sinful nature our strength should come through the glory divine by jesus christ on calvary when he rose from the grave and he says to you and to me love love one another love sin steals your love it will steal your love in a heartbeat i don't know how many times in my life where I've known the right thing to do, but yet I refused to do it because in that moment I wanted a quick satisfaction. I, I didn't want to wait for what could have been or what should have been. I wanted to take control and have something right then and there, only to wake up the next day or, 
only to sit there and put my head in my hands and be like, Lord, why did I just do that again? Lord, why can't I get this done? The fact is, it's a sinful nature. The Bible says that you are a new creation through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. You aren't who you used to be, and you'll never will be who you used to be. The minute you hear the word of God, your life changes. Rather, if you accept Jesus or you don't accept Jesus, your life will change. Every moment that you live from that forward, that moment forward, you will always, in the back of your mind, know the word of God. You'll always know that what you're doing is not just robbing your family, your children, and you, but you're robbing your opportunity to spend an entire, an, an <laughs> entire um, <laughs> life with, with, our, with God, our Father. I'm sorry, something in my, in my head just messed me up, and, and I was just thinking when, uh, when, that guy, when that guy walked in, how, how easy, how easy we can be distracted Amen. by the things of this world. And I, when I was trying to say it, eternity, spend eternity with God, and, and then nothing to that person that walked in. I don't know who that person is, but in my mind, I was, I was thinking that, and just like that, somebody could walk in when you're doing the right thing and you're being a godly person. Like I said, I don't know who that is, and I'm not saying nothing against that person, but I'm saying in, in that moment when I saw that, I just thought that's another thing that sin will do, isn't it? Peter. You could be walking and you got your eyes on Jesus Come on, Peter. and you on this big old ocean that's waving like this. And you already was worried about coming out on that thing. And Jesus says, come on, come on. I got come on, man. Come. I say, come on. I can see him now. Come on, man. I said, come on. It's going to be all right. And he climbed out of that boat and that boat's doing this. number. I don't know if you ever watched the, like the cruise line this and and stuff on YouTube, but them, that's some crazy, what, you would never catch my fat butt on a ship in the middle of the ocean, ain't gonna happen, I look like a snack to a, to a shark, ain't doing it, ain't happening, but here you go, he steps out of the boat, he's walking, and you know them waves ain't gonna be like, y'all, no, 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 he ain't Jesus, he's somebody else, we gonna mess with this dude, what happened, he look away, he started falling, what did he say, come on, what did he say, anybody know what he said, hmm? Lord save me, Come on, what did he say? Huh? Ye of little faith. That's right. That's right, sister. Hey, say it loud next time. I got it hard to hear. I'm a tr old truck driver. <laughs> Ye of what little faith? Come on. Let's not be distracted by sin. Let's not take, let it not lead us away from God, away from Calvary, and away from glory. Death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. I don't, I don't know how many people that I've known that have died in sin, that uh, died getting high, excuse me, that died uh, doing something that they uh, had no business doing. In, this, in the program alone, you guys... We, we lost some, uh, quite a few people last, this, year, this year, haven't we? Yeah. And uh, we know a few of those people weren't living in righteousness and holiness. They weren't living according to God's will and God's promise. They weren't. And we know what happens when we die in sin, don't we? You can't just believe in the heaven part. You can't just believe in the glory part. You can't just believe in the good part. You, if there's a good, there's an evil. If there's glory, there's destruction. You can't hold the hand of the world and the hand of, of God and think that you're going to make it in. You can't do it. You can't be going to the strip clubs on Saturday, praising Jesus on Sunday, committing adultery on Monday, drinking on Tuesday, getting high on Wednesday, thinking on Thursday I'm going to do it all over again. It don't work that way. You must walk a holy life. The Bible says to grab hold of the gospel plow. In case you don't know what a plow is, a plow is a tool to use to till the land. The, to, uh, the land, uh, the, the soil, if you will. The, uh, and he says, if you sway to the right or you sway to the left, you are not worthy of the kingdom of God. Why? Because he knows what that swaying means. It means you're trying to get away from the rock that's in front of you, the roots that are in front of you. You're trying to skip over the hard parts. You ain't, you're not trying to be set, uh, sanctified and set apart. The Bible tells us that uh, 
that sin always, always will leave you unsatisfied and will always leave you in a state of destruction. Sin leads to more sin and, and to it leads to death. And um, I don't take it lightly because I've lost, I lost friends where they went to Bible school and they've, I mean, they've done a lot of great things in the glory of God. And then you hear that they, somebody blew their head off with a shotgun because they were trying to rob the dope man. And then you go into the, their funeral and everybody wants to remember all the great and glorious things that they were, God allowed them to do through, through their ministry or through ministries that they partnered with. Nobody wants to talk about the elephant that he was robbing a dope man trying to get high and got his head blown off. You know? We're here today. We have error in our lungs. Some of us can see pretty good. Some of us can hear pretty good. Some of us can walk okay. Some of us can talk all right. Some of us can think some things. Some of us can sing some things. Some can do some things. But if without Christ, all those things are nothing. I want you to be under, understand what I'm saying today. I'm not casting judgment on you. I'm casting judgment on all of us. That includes me. That includes the preacher. That includes any, anybody and everybody that has air in their lungs. That if we're not doing the right thing, we're doing the wrong thing. And the wrong thing will lead to death, will lead to unhappiness, it will steal your joy, it will bring you down and make you unworthy of the kingdom of heaven. It will leave you satisfied, it won't leave you, it won't, it won't leave you any other way but one way. And that's a pathway to hell. I'm telling you today, for those who think you can hold the hand of the world and the hand of the Father, it ain't going to happen. I grew up fatherless and poverty and poor, beaten. I mean, I had a rough. Mom kicked me out, choose over her boyfriend. Me and him didn't get along. I stood up to him one day, and he realized I was bigger, stronger than him, and he knew that there was no more beating me. You weren't going to beat me like no mule no more. I ain't, ha ain't happening. You ain't taking my, you ain't, you ain't robbing my money. You ain't gonna do, I ain't doing it no more. She, they told me 14 years old, get out. Broke my heart. My mom, right? I ain't had no dad. My dad was in prison, out of prison, chose his drugs, chose whatever he wanted to do. You know, he, he was selfish. To this day, he's still a selfish person. But when you lose your mom and you lose your father, and then you find your grandparents, and they don't want you. Your uncles and your aunts don't want you. Your brother don't want you. You start thinking horrible things. You know, why, the, why am I here? Ain't nobody want me. So then you start doing things. You start robbing people. You start hustling. You start slinging dope. You start making meth. You start doing things that you, that you think is all right. Why? The whole world don't want you. I didn't grow up in church. Nobody told me that Jesus is the glory and holy thing and that we should hold on to him and He's the center of all our hope and that we should be uh, sanctified and set apart of the ways of this world and that he's the father to the fatherless. Nobody ever told me that. You know what they always told me? Go to your GD room. Go to your G, go, go do the GD this. Go G, GD is all I ever heard. I always heard the blaspheming part of a holy thing. I always heard God spoken in a, an unadulterated way. But when I found out, when I found out that there was a king of all kings, when I found out that God sent his son to die so that I could have a father, so that I could have a family, so I could live in a community of believers, so that I could be who I am in Christ, everything about me started changing. I didn't I tell you the truth. I didn't quit overnight. That ain't no lie. I stumbled. I hit my head more times than I can probably recall. I mean, it was hard to stop cooking dope. It was hard for me to stop cooking dope. It was easy to walk away from it after I done popped up a couple batches and made some money, got high, and did what I wanted to do. And be like, yeah, I'll take a break. Well, then it became, well, cops are probably after me anyway, so let me go back to the whole God thing. That'd be good for me for a little while. But then one day, the real kingdom of God will grab a hold of you. 
and start shaking these things away from you. And it'll turn the people that used to hate you, used to despise even thought, thinking of you being in the same room, to where they start loving on you. Where your family starts becoming a family, and you realize in that instance, the devil can't steal my joy anymore. Amen. Sin can't take the blood of Christ away from me. It can't wash that away from me. Then I realized that I do have a confidence in front of my holy God. I can be separated from this world. I have overcome. I have and I am fighting the fight and keeping my faith. The race that I am on is mine with Christ. And no matter how slow I go, or no matter how fast I accelerate, that race is a heavenly race. No matter what my thoughts at that moment is, is that I know no matter how hard my front's going to be, the kingdom of God is right there with me. If I'm playing on the football field against the world, they're going to lose every time. Just like Oklahoma did last night. <laughs> Praise God for that one. I'm just using it as a reference because, you know, Oklahoma, when they first came on the, on the scene last night, everybody was talking because, you know, the, I don't know if the quarterback, Heisman, the other guy should have had the Heisman. Well, guess what? The one who should have had the Heisman scored a touchdown within the first 12 seconds. They were talking about oh, how it's going to be a shootout. I didn't want no shootout. Then the cameras panned to their faces, and they all like, oh, man. So the coach, if you, I don't know if you've you seen it, gathered them all on the field and said, guys, it ain't over. It ain't over. Don't, don't lose your faith. Don't lose what you've been practicing. You guys have been winning and winning and winning. Just because you're against the odds doesn't mean you give up. Amen. It means you hold on to that plow, and you plow straight through. And you keep going, you keep going, because why? No matter what's in front of you, no matter what comes against you, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. Nothing shall stand in your way. The Bible says that he makes your enemy your footstool. Yeah, right. Well, I don't want to get you too excited before the church starts. <laughs> I just want to let you know that sin does not satisfy. No. Amen. Yeah. And I'm telling you the truth. When I'm telling you the truth, that it will steal your joy. It will take everything away from you. But through Christ, you can do all things. Through Christ, you're a new creation. Yes. Through Christ, you have a father. Through Christ, you have victory. And only, only through Christ can you get to heaven. Amen. Amen. Today, I want to let you know that I love you. Christ loves you. God, he loves you so much. Or oh, the Father that are in heaven loves you so much. I mean, he sent his only son. His being himself sent him down here for one purpose, not to start some big, beautiful family or to have some huge ministry with billions and trillions of dollars. He came down here to serve the sick and dying, to heal those who were uh, that were sick, to raise the dead. He came down here to... <laughs> Show you how to live in glory, how to be sanctified, how to be separated from this world, how to overcome those things that seem impossible. Today, I want to encourage you, as Hebrews says, that sin can never take your glory and your joy away again. If you are living that holy and sanctified, sanctified life upon God and his beloved son, Jesus says he goes to prepare a place for us. If it wasn't true, he wouldn't tell us. You know what the Bible says? He says, I send you another. I send you the Holy Ghost, your comforter. Yo, yes, yo, no kind of guy. The person that said, no, 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 knucklehead, we ain't doing that. We know better than that. We know we should go down that road. You're like, yeah, yeah, you're right. You're probably right. We probably should go ahead and go to church. Hey, Amen. how many people have raised, be honest, how many people say, Lord, it's a modern day. How come we don't have church at 5 p.m.? Why it got to be so early in the morning? <laughs> hey, anybody ever thought about that? I thought about that last night. I'm like, this, this is, why we got to have church so early in the morning? Why can't we have church when we decide to have church, right? With three or more are gathered. Listen, I'm just, I'm just going off with that one. Y'all don't, don't take that. Pastor have me hung out here by the church. <laughs> just know, 
What I'm saying to you is in love. And what I'm saying to you, I'm saying to myself every day in a mirror that I can do all things through Christ. No matter what my past was, it's not my future. No matter what they think of me, it's about what he thinks about me. Don't let the sorrows of yesterday make you cry today. Let your victories today carve a path to victory tomorrow. <coughs> I ask each and every one of you today to remind yourself, is my heart beating in the same rhythm that the kingdom of God is beating? Am I truly living a sanctified and holy life? Thank you. Uh, we're going to pray out today and just... Uh, know that uh, I do I love you guys and I I really do thank you for allowing me to come here and uh, give them the message that God has given me to to tell you guys today and and I really want you to understand when I preach I preach to me as well you don't know how many times I in, in my head I think I got to do the right thing I got to hold on to that garment I got to be I got to be ye holy because the father in heaven who made me is holy hey man hey man Lord, I ask you to bless us today, God, as we, we heard your word, Lord, that we seek you more than we seek anything else, God. Lord, that the Holy Spirit continues to comfort us, to guide us, and to lead us upon the holiness of holies. God, God, let us have a heart that heart beats in the same rhythm of heaven. God, we give you gl oh, glory and honor today as you deserve it. In the most precious name, in the name above all names, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. and amen.